Okay, hello everyone, um, and welcome back to this uh, tutorial series on the theory of computation. So in this video, we'll be looking at an example of using the proof by induction uh, technique to prove a statement about, in this case, trees. Okay, so um, if you don't really know what a tree is, there's um, a video that explains or that reviews basic concepts about graphs, about walking through graphs, about trees, and about um, different types of trees, okay? But in a nutshell, a tree is a fully connected acyclic, acyclic graph, right? Um, and so the statement that we wanna prove here is given such a tree, which we assume has um, a set of vertices and a set of edges, we want to prove that the cardinality of the set of edges is always one less than the cardinality of the set of vertices, right? So in other words, this is just saying the number of edges is equal to the number of vertices minus one. Okay, so first of all, is this actually true? Um, how can we actually know if this is true? Um, well, we can give us ourselves uh, an idea by first looking at a few examples of trees. And so what we can do is we can start with the smallest possible trees. So what I mean by that is we can take trees with number of vertices equal to, well, the smallest number of vertices that a tree could have is one, right? And so if you have a tree of vertex one, it just looks like this, okay? And so, if you have a tree like this, right, so let's say this is your tree, then the cardinality of V is one, and the cardinality of E should be the cardinality of V minus one. And in this case, it definitely is, right, because um, if, you if you take the cardinality of V and you subtract one, you get one minus one, and so you have no edges, zero number of edges. And of course, this is true, right? This is true because if you look at this tree, it has no edges, right? So the cardinality of its edge set is going to be zero, okay? Okay, excellent. Now, if we look at trees with number of vertices equals to two, there are um, still only one, there's still only one possible tree that you could really have with two vertices, right? So. Um, if you have two vertices, then you have one here and one here. You can have one here and one here. And then because a tree has to be connected, right, um, it has to have a single edge between these two vertices, right? So then the cardinality of V is two, and uh, the cardinality of E, right, there's one, uh, it has one edge, which is equal to two minus one, right, which is the cardinality of V minus one. Okay. So it looks like this is true for two. Now, if we go to three, then we can have a tree that looks like this. Um, and can we have any other trees? No, I think all the other trees will be isomorphic to this, right? Um, and so in this case, what we have is we have a vertex set of size three, and we have two edges. Okay, which is three minus one. Okay, and so from the looks of it, from these three examples, it kind of seems like this might be true. And I guess the intuition of why this might be true is because as soon as you add a vertex to the tree, you have to add an edge, right? And so you're always adding for an edge, right? There's sort of a one-to-one -one adding of vertices and edges. But at the very start, when you start with a tree, you have an extra vertex and no edges. And so what's happening is as you're adding an edge and a vertex, an edge and a vertex, an edge and the vertex, this keeps the count of vertices and edges the same. And then this initial vertex adds a plus one to the number of vertices. And that's why there's always this um, imbalance of exactly one. Okay, that's the intuition. 
that's definitely not uh, enough for a proof. To do um, a proof, you can either use a, a direct proof, um, but that might start getting messy because then you have to rely, like I said, on some sort of intuitive argument about adding edges and vertices. A much cleaner and I think a much simpler way of proving this is by induction. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to prove this by induction. Now you might be thinking, well, okay, induction. So when we do induction, we need to prove something on an integer n. Now it doesn't really look like we have any integers here. We have the cardinality of e and the cardinality of v and this, this minus one, but it's not really as clear cut as when we had something like two to the n is greater or equal to n squared. And so I agree, it isn't as clear cut, but what you'll notice is that we are still talking about a statement um, which is based on integers. And so what in integers are there here? There's the, the integer that re represents the cardinality of e and the integer that represents the cardinality of v. And so what we can do, right, in fact, you could do an induction on either the cardinality of e or the cardinality of v. What I'll do is I'll do induction on the cardinality of v, i.e. I'll do it on this, right? But you could just as well have done it on the cardinality of the edge set, okay? And so what I'll do then is I'll say for the purpose of this notation and for this proof, um, right, so for the purpose of the proof, not of the notation, I'll say that if I have a tree V E, then the cardinality of V is equal to N, right? And so now, first of all, what's actually going to be my base case? So remember the base case is when you're trying to prove the statement for the smallest possible value of the integer, right? Of the integer n here, okay? Well, now you have to kind of reason logically about what this integer n is saying. n is the cardinality of v, right? Which is the size of your vertex set. And so what that means is that if you actually wanna have a tree, you have to have at least one vertex, right? And so the base case, the base case will be when the tree has a single vertex, right? I.e. when n is equal to one. It can't be when n is equal to zero because if you have zero vertices, then you don't have anything. You don't have a graph, right? Your vertex set and your edge set are both empty, right? And so we're not considering that to be a tree. We need at least a vertex for something to be a tree, let alone a graph, right? Or I guess you would have said that uh, the other way, but you get what I mean, right? You need at least something to state, uh, to make this statement about, right? Okay, so when the tree has a single vertex, well, we've covered this case, right? That's the case when uh, this is the tree, it's a single vertex, so, n is equal to one, right? And the size of the edge set is equal to zero, which is equal to um, one minus one, where this first one is n, okay? So that's the base case. That's pretty easy to do, excellent. Okay, now, what will be the inductive hypothesis? What do I assume is true? Well, I assume um, I assume that given a tree VE with cardinality V equal to N, where N is arbitrary integer greater or equal to one, okay? That, let's say that for T with uh, cardinality v equal to n, that the edge set size is equal to n minus one. Okay, so that's what I'm assuming in the inductive hypothesis. Now in the inductive step, I want to show this for 
n plus 1. That is, for prime equal to v prime, right? So this is a completely different graph, g prime, a completely different arbitrary graph, g prime, which is v prime e prime with vertex set size n plus 1, right? I need to show that the size of the edge set is equal to n plus 1 minus 1. Or in other words, that the size of the edge set is n. Right? That's what I need to show. Right? So this is what I need to show. I need to show this. Okay. And so how do I actually do this? Well, to do that, we need a new page. Okay. So we know that we have, right? So we know that we have this new graph. Did I call? Oh, damn. See, I should have called this, I shouldn't have called this the graph t prime. I should have called this the tree t prime. Okay, so I know that I have the graph t prime, which is v prime. E prime. Now I know, right, that this is my graph t prime, right? I know that I have n plus one vertices, right? So now I know that there's going to be um, at least one vertex that's not going to be uh, connected to any other vertex except for one. Okay, so in other words, what I mean is that I know there's a, a singleton edge connection. Okay, so what I'm saying is if I have a tree, there must be a vertex that's only connected to uh, another vertex. Okay, so this is just a fact about trees that I'll use here. Right, uh, there is a vertex with degree equal to one. And in fact, this would actually require a whole other proof, but I'm just going to state this fact without proof. Um, and um, as an exercise, as an exercise, I'll ask you to prove it. Okay. Um, okay, excellent. So I know that I have at least one vertex with degree one. So let's call that vertex, let's call that vertex X, okay. And so it has degree one, um, and so it has a single incident edge. Now what I'll do is I'll remove X and its incident edge from t prime. Now, why am I doing this, right? So what is the actual intuition of removing a vertex and an edge from t prime? How could I have thought of this? Well, the intuition, right? So the intuition is that I want to use my inductive hypothesis, right? And so for me to be able to use my inductive hypothesis, I need to uh, convert T prime, right? I need to somehow reduce the vertex set size of T prime to N, right? I need to convert V prime such that as N vertices. And the reason why x here is so convenient is because it has degree 1. And so if I remove x, I, I know exactly which edge I'm removing. I'm removing its only edge, right? So this doesn't create, this doesn't create a disconnected tree now. Because if I had picked something like uh, a vertex in the middle, maybe removing this vertex would have caused me to create a forest, right? And so then at that point, I have n vertices, but I can no longer use the inductive hypothesis 
because the inductive hypothesis is on trees, right? So essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to remove something from T prime so that it has N vertices and it remains a tree, right? So I want to use my inductive hypothesis. Um, and so I need to convert T prime such that it has N vertices and very importantly, it remains a tree. And this definitely happens if I remove X, right? Because imagine you have some tree like this, um, something like this. I don't know, just making something up, right? Um, so this is definitely a tree, yes. So if I remove uh, this guy and I remove this guy, right? So if I just remove um, that vertex and that edge, this is still a tree. Oops. This is still a tree, right? And now it has um, one less um, vertex than um, I initially had. So if I had, um, if this was the tree of size n plus one, right, with n plus one vertices, then if I removed this vertex and this edge, I would get a tree with n vertices. And so now at this point, right, I can use the inductive hypothesis. So what I'll say is all newly created tree T double prime, right? So T double prime is essentially the remainder of the tree, right? So this is T double prime, okay? Since T double prime has now N vertices, right? It has N vertices. We can use the inductive hypothesis. So namely, if I say that T double prime is equal to V double prime, E double prime, then I know by the inductive hypothesis, what do I know? I know that the cardinality of the edge set is equal to the cardinality vertex set minus one, okay? So by the inductive hypothesis, I know that this guy will equal this guy minus one, right? So this is by the inductive hypothesis, okay? And so, um, or if we use the notation of N, right? Right, we have E double prime is equal to um, N minus one, okay? So now what we just need to do is we need to say, what happens if we add back the vertex x and the edge that connected it, right? Because if we add back the vertex edge, uh, if the, the vertex x and the edge that connected it, we get back the tree t prime, but now we know exactly what's going to happen um, to the counts of the edge set and the vertex set, okay? So what I mean by that is now if we add back, the vertex x and the, uh, let's say it's incident edge, right? So if we do this, okay, then the cardinality, right? So what this does is it reconstructs reconstructing the original tree t prime, right? So if I add back x and its incident edge, I'm just recreating the tree t prime. And so um, I get back the initial edge set and the initial vertex set. But now what happened is that the cardinality of e prime is now equal to the cardinality of e double prime plus one, right? So this plus one comes from the fact that um, I added 
the edge incident to x back to create t prime. And then similarly, for the vertex, the vertex set, right, t prime is going to equal v double prime plus one, right? And it's exactly for the same reason, right? Exactly for the same reason as above, except that now I'm talking about the vertex instead of the edge, okay? So now, what is the relation between um, the cardinality of V prime and the cardinality of E prime? Well, we can just do a bit of um, quick sort of math um, to see what we get, right? So. If we start with the cardinality of E prime, right, we know that this is equal to the cardinality of E double prime um, plus one, right? Um, but remember, by the inductive hypothesis, the cardinality of E double prime was n minus one, right? And so I have uh, n minus one plus one, which is equal to n. And this is exactly the result that we were looking for. Right? Remember, what we wanted to show is we wanted to show in the inductive step that um, the cardinality of E prime was equal to n plus 1 minus 1. But that's exactly n, right? And so that's exactly what we've shown here, right? We have the cardinality of E prime, which we computed by adding an extra edge to this um, smaller tree T double prime. So we got N minus one, which is the size of the edge set in the smaller tree, and we added back one edge. And so that's how we got N. So in other words, we get n plus 1 minus 1, right? And so uh, this proves the statement for n plus 1. And then by induction, this proves, or sorry, not by inductive hypothesis, just by induction, by the principle of mathematical induction, this proves the statement for all n. Excellent. Okay, and so what I actually want you to notice is this argument here of um, taking t prime and then removing this um, vertex and this edge. This was very similar to the initial intuition I gave you about how you start with one uh, vertex and how you add an edge, add a vertex, add an edge, add a vertex, add an edge, add a vertex. Essentially what I did is I just did this argument but backwards, right? So you can imagine you have a tree, you have some tree, okay? And so what essentially I did is I said, well, um, I know that uh, maybe this was the vertex I started with. Then I added an edge, added a vertex, added an edge, added a vertex, added an edge, added a vertex, and so on. Then I know that if I do this up to n vertices, I get uh, this equality, right? So now um, if I add an extra um, vertex, then I have a new tree, right? Maybe this is the extra vertex and edge that I added. So now what I'm going to do is, um, because I want to use the inductive hypothesis, I'm just going to say for a second that this edge and this vertex didn't exist. So I know that the statement is true for this smaller tree. 
And then if I just add back um, this edge and this vertex, the um, this imbalance of one remains the same because I'm adding back an edge and a vertex, right? So what I'm trying to show here is that this intuition of um, what I did initially of adding an edge and adding a vertex, that really helped me in thinking about how to get from a T prime to a smaller graph T double prime so that I could use the inductive hypothesis, right? And so the key was just to note that this was always possible. Um, and so I did that by using this fact about trees, um, which I really encourage you to try and prove. Um, I'll also add it as an exercise on the website. Okay, and so this concludes um, the, the video about, um, the, um, about using in, induction or the principle of mathematical induction to prove um, a statement on, in this case, trees.